Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and today I'm going to be talking about the time I got hit on by Zac Efron. This was crazy. This was like four years ago. I had just gotten out of a huge uh, three-year relationship where me and this guy lived together and his name was Derek. And after we broke up, I met another guy at, named Derek from uh, going to a party because I was uh, working on the show Glee as a cheerleader. So I was at a party with like some of the Glee people and this guy Derek was there. And we started like hanging out and I even put him in my phone as new Derek because I had dated already somebody named Derek. Now, New Derek was a fucking loser. He was like one of these like LA people who just wants to be around celebrities all the time and wants to act like they live a certain lifestyle that they don't really live. Anyway, kind of just like a fuckboy. And so he knew a lot of important people. And he one day says, do you want to come hang out with me and my friends at Pink Taco? Which is a place on Sunset, which is actually where my girlfriend Laurel works. Hey, Laurel! Um, so, I go to Pink Taco, and one of his friends is fucking Zach Efron. I know. So, fucking Zach is there, chilling out like a normal human being. And my friend Derek left to probably go hit on girls. And I was there sitting next to him, um, sitting next to Zach. And he's like, do you want to go downstairs with me? I need to smoke a cigarette. And I was like, well, why don't you just smoke a cigarette outside? And then he gave me this look like I was the stupidest. I guess I am stupid. The most stupid person in the world. He was like... Uh, I can't go outside. I'm freaking Zac Efron. So I felt really dumb, but I went with him because when Zac Efron asked you to go downstairs with him, you go, even if you don't smoke. <laughs> so I go down there, like, <laughs> and it's like this weird basement full of, like, costumes and stuff, which I don't know. This was a restaurant. I don't know why that was happening, but there was, like, a bunch of weird storage stuff down there and he's smoking and he says can I kiss you you remind me of a girl I used to date which is not the most romantic line ever Zac Efron you should know you do romantic movies you know that that would never be one of the lines but I was just thankful to be around but I couldn't do it because I had came with this other guy who was a douchebag but I don't want to be a douchebag too and be, you know, just a bad person and just leveling up for the sake of, you know? So I just declined regrettably and he didn't think that was a big deal. He was just like, oh, that's okay. And um, we went upstairs and Derek sees us coming upstairs together. And he gets really mad because I'm sure he's like, oh, she was down there making out with Zach Efron. Um, so he comes up and he's like, you're a slut and I can't believe you would do that. And you came here with me and blah, 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 blah. And I'm trying to explain to him that nothing happened. He doesn't believe me. Um, and then what he does is something pretty evil. He leaves. He was my ride. And he leaves and he takes my phone, my keys, and my wallet with him in his car. And he knows that they're in there. And he's just trying to screw me over. So he leaves. And I'm looking for him. I can't find him. And his friends are like, oh, he left. He went to a different party. And I'm like, are you going to the party? And they were like, yeah, we're going to go. You can come with us. So I go to the party and I find him there. And I'm like, hey, can I get my keys and my wallet back? And he's like, oh, no. My roommate took my car back home, so I won't be able to get it right away. And I'm like, well, when are you going home? He's like, I'm going to stay here all night. So my choices are basically to walk home or stay at the party all night with this guy that I now hate and I'm figuring out is one of the worst people I've ever met. So then he's like, oh, I want to show you something. So he takes me inside the party and he takes me to a room and in the room, is Zac Efron having sex with some girl. And he's like, see, 
you weren't important. Like to hurt, try to hurt me, but I didn't do anything. He probably to this day thinks I did. I didn't, but it didn't hurt me because I was like, yeah, you are just a jerk. <laughs> it just helped me see that he was not the kind of guy that I wanted to be dating. So then I went to the pool and I was hanging out with some people by the pool and I was telling jokes and this was when I just started doing stand up. So I was by there like slinging some really dumb, probably bad jokes. And I had all, used to have all these jokes about how my sister is, is a lesbian. And somebody overheard this and they started running out and they were like, you have to leave the party. You can't be here. You hate gay people and that's not okay and you can't talk about and I was like listen I was just kidding I'm a comedian and I was just going through some of the jokes I tell and the lady was like oh you're a comedian then you can stay and I was like what she goes come here I'm like best friends with Dan Cook I was like what I made the Zac Efron dumb face what are you freaking what? How freaking dense are you? Your best friends are dink cook? I don't want to stay. So I'm trying to figure out a way to get home. One of the guys who was by the pool is like, do you want to come with me? I live in West Hollywood. I can give you a ride. So I was like, okay. And he took me to my house. I was just praying to God and Allah and Mexican Jesus that all that my roommate would be home so that I could get in the house. We get there. She wasn't, was not home. So <laughs> the guy's like, do you want to just stay at my house tonight, tonight until your roommate gets home? I was like, well, I can get molested in front of my front door or I can get molested at this house. I'd rather get molested at a house. So I go with him to his house and it's this big mansion, like this incredible big house in, in West Hollywood. And I'm like, what does this guy do? So. He was really sweet, really nice, no, was not a creep at all, and I went to bed. In the morning, I was, like, looking for the bathroom, and I opened this door that was like a closet room, and it was filled <laughs> with Boy Meets World memorabilia, like, creepy stuff, like, murderer stuff, like, you are going to murder the cast of Boy Meets World, like, a bunch, a bunch, a bunch, room filled with Boy Meets World stuff like wigs and pictures of the cast that were like pictures of them like from a Polaroid. It was so creepy. And so I started to turn around out of the room and he was right behind me. He was right behind me and he goes, did you find what you're looking for? And I was like, oh my God, I didn't see anything. Like it was, so, he was going to kill me. So he takes me home. It's like the most awkward ride ever, right? For me, he seemed to be just fine. But for me, I thought he I was just surprised he was taking me home and not burying me in his backyard. So I get to my house and I'm telling my girlfriend about this experience and about this guy, Ben, who saved my life. She was like, are you sure it wasn't Ben Savage? And I'm like, who's that? And she was like, he's the main guy on Boy Meets World, Corey. And so I looked in my phone and it was him. He saved my life. <laughs> He was the nicest guy ever. We still talk from time to time. But it was just a, one of the craziest, craziest nights ever. If you want to hear more stories like that, I definitely have more. And I'm going to pub start publishing them to this channel. Go ahead and like and subscribe to hear more of them.